Hey guys, Lancer here. Hope everyone's doing well. So the videos that everyone probably wants to watch. We're going to look into Modern Horizon 2 and most likely how it's going to affect reserve list cards going forward. Now I also have the schedule for this year. I've done this before, but there's actually more to add for this. So let's get to it. One of the most important things to remember is the fact that Modern Horizon 2 is actually in between Dungeons and Dragons and Innistrad coming out later this year at June 11th. Now, between all of this, there's actually a lot going on. So Innistrad is going to be at the very end. Then you got Dungeons and Dragons. Then you got Secret Layers 2 Ultimate con uh, Collection. Then you got Commander 2021. Strixhaven School of Mages Mystical Archive. This one I haven't heard about, but we'll get to it. Strixhaven, obviously. Challenger decks, which I did a review of, and Time Spiral, which is coming out, and it looks like it's got a lot of re reprinted cards. Of course, it, it is. It's remastered of Time Spiral. But as we get into this, more and more cards, uh, more and more products that Wizards of the Coast is releasing without any backup for the cards that they're printing right now is going to push a lot of people to either not put big money into individual cards. They will. I think the, the thing is, people are thinking this the wrong way. There's a pretty high chance that boxes might still set out, like collector boxes or booster boxes, because of the idea that investing has, the mindset of investing that's come out now, which is the individual cards might be reprinted, but the boxes themselves hold more value than the cards inside them. That's what Rudy's been going on for a long time. And I actually believe that to be true because of the feeling of when you get it, the age of it, the fact that you don't know what's in it, the lottery feeling. All of, that th all of those things are going to cause the boxes to probably be more stable, depending on how many they print, than the individual cards. But if that's the case, then the individual cards and the more costly boxes are going to come from the reserve list and the old cards way back when, because they are not being printed again. No one's touched them for many, many years, and they're going to keep it that way for a little while at least. I, I can't see any reason why Wizards of the Coast are going to fight it right now, because they can just reprint cards similar to it and get away with that. But we'll have to see how that goes. <clears throat> but one of the most important things to remember is, when Wizards of the Coast looks into how many products they're printing, they actually... From what I heard, they spend maybe a year or two getting a front run of products before they start putting them onto the market. So 2020, unless they were really, really fast on the switch, they planned all of that in 2019 and 2018, or even before that. 2020 is the same thing. Uh, 2021 is the same thing. They planned that before 2020, probably. If that's the case, then the amount of products that are coming out and the effects that it has on the reserve list, the effects it has on wallet fatigue, it's all going to be something that Wizards of the Coast is keeping a close eye on. Currently, the market is most likely telling Wizards of the Coast, hey, don't worry about it. We will buy everything that you guys can make. And that includes the reserve list as well. And it's true. Because right now, even with the reserve list buyouts, a lot of the boxes are selling well. And that's not even factoring in the fact that a lot of the older, like Ixalan and Innistrad, like Ravnica, Gills of Ravnica, Modern, uh, sorry, Modern Masters 1, like if I went back and checked, uh, sorry, Modern Horizons 1, it's actually moving up in price again. It is, it's moving up in price and it's actually going, I have quite a few of the cards in it are rising up, especially things like the first liver because that's not being reprinted or at least we don't know if it's being reprinted in the new Modern Horizons 2. Man, that would be weird. Time Swirl Remastered comes with a sl uh, sliver. Modern Horizons 2 comes with a sliver. The Sliver Queen is on the reserve list. That's probably the better place to put money instead of buying the first Sliver and Sliver Legion because you don't know what's going to come out in Modern Horizons 2. We only know the release date of June the 11th. And... There's been rumors going around that this, some of these boxes, especially like the collector edition, is going to be more than $600. You know, 
which means you're not going to be able to spend all your money where you want. And that makes it very, very tricky to buy any of these new products. From my point of view, I'm not really buying reserve list cards anymore. I'm not thinking about selling them, but I'm not buying anymore because I'm waiting for the market to figure itself out. But when things like, when news like this comes out and when the prices for these things come out and the cards come out, especially if there's a lot of reprints again, like Liliana of the Veil, if they, if they go completely crazy with the Modern Horizons 2 and they print Liliana of the Veil, Snapcaster Mage, like they can go crazy with this product. Like I'd be very careful. I know Liliana of the Veil has been moving up in the last couple of days to maybe a week or two because Tomagoff has been boiled for time and uh, time spiral remastered. Something we all knew, but apparently it's a surprise to the market. The card's moving up now because of people planning to get Liliana to sell to people or most likely keep for decks in the future that include Tomagoyf because they're a good combination for Jund. If that keeps happening and then they print Liliana in this set and Liliana tanks back down to $50, $40, that just pushes more and more people to the reserve list. Now, I have looked into a couple of different videos of what is going on with the reserve list. A lot of people seem to think that no matter how bad a card is, it is worth buying at a inflated price because of the reserve list status. Funnily enough, I cannot completely disagree, but I would love to know, and if you guys, if you're one of them, let me know what made you buy this card now and not two years, a year ago, four years ago, five, 10 years ago, because I'm getting comments saying, hey, I joined really late into this game, and which I did. I, I'm, I'm not, I don't know how old the average, actually I do. Most people seem to be around about 25 to 45. But I joined in Ravnica, the original Ravnica, and then I've been on and off, never paid attention to the reserve list until recently in the last two years. And that's just mostly because I put enough money into Magic where I'm starting to get hurt by the reprints. And then I started going, hey, what is the reserve list? Looking back in time to figure out exactly what cards I want from the reserve list and then buying select ones, especially in 2020, because I just realized, hey, Wizards is going to go crazy with double masters and reprints. Let's just buy some. It's not like the Australian government was giving up money to people. It was mostly just trying to boost up the economy in general. But with all of the buildup that was happening with the world's economy, it just felt like a good time to get out of some money in my bank account and put it somewhere else. And a lot of people are saying that, that you know, I, I go into debt to just borrow money so I can put money into, the, into something that's going to grow faster than 2.5% or less, which is the normal interest rate or even less, like interest rate 0.01. Terrible. But if there's a reason why, well, but some of these reserve list cards that have been moving up are very, very strange. They're not good. They're not going to be played. They're pretty much collector edition tokenized no, tokens that you're going to just have sitting in the shelf, which is fine. But that does not mean that this, there's going to be someone that wants to buy it when the hype dies down. And <clears throat> there's a lot of good videos out there nowadays which tell you the difference between demand that's consistent, growing, building, and hype or fear of missing out, which causes a parabolic move in the market price before someone realizes that no one else wants to buy the card at the price he paid it for. And then if he's someone that bought when he was in debt, then the market comes crashing back down. So I think good reserve list cards, especially good condition reserve list cards, and the older the cards, the higher the value, no doubt. But I'd be very careful about looking into cards that are 10, 20 times what their price was just a month ago and looking into them as investment because if you are okay with locking up your money for the next five, 10 years, that's fine. But with a market like this, where everyone seems to be cycling from one high to another high to another high, you might not get the returns that you'd expect when compared to someone else. And that might make you sell at a loss or get scared and stuff like that. If you have no fear, go for it. There are plenty of articles, especially in MTG, MTG Finance, where the, you know, the guy just comes out and says, yeah, I just bought, got into a mortgage. 
you know, two hundred twenty thousand dollars and put it back into the um, MTG reserve list, and now I'm almost double or triple what I paid for. It's like great. Just be careful. Just be careful. You know, there is always the slow and steady or the hasty way to make money, and the hasty way doesn't usually seem to work too well in the long term. But what do I know? I'm apparently too young or not been in this game for long enough. So let's get to it. I think from what I'm going to cover off, it's just Modern Horizons 2 feels like another push to people or from Wizards of the Coast to go and look at the reserve list. And I don't know if Wizards of the Coast is realizing this, but I know they planned these sets out a long time ago. So maybe in the next couple of months, there might be something coming out that says, hey, we acknowledge that us printing this much is causing people to look to other products that is not indirectly that is not directly in benefit to Wizards of the Coast and Hasbro. Let's find out what they do because I don't think they can keep going along this route. The money is going to get absorbed into the reserve list and it's going to sit there and people aren't going to be very confident with the new product which means all these price hikes and collector boxes and all that. They're not going to be opened for cards. They're just going to be opened as collector items and I guess from Wizards of the Coast side, it doesn't really matter what they open for. But if people stop playing the game, then this is the only generation that plays it. That itself can end a game. Like, if there's no young people, if there's no new groups of people that are willing to come in, like even Warhammer 40k and um, Lord of the Rings, they're not for young people. You can get your kids to watch them, but and they're being remastered and put back into the stores, but you can't just keep doing that. So, the, and what, what, Warhammer 40k, that's not a young person's game. I, can, I can't just go and find someone that's like, hey, you, you know about Warhammer? No, I, I mean, I grew up with it. I'd read some books. I never played all of it, but the thing is, you know, the media is there. It's just new people had to keep coming into a game like this, which is why a lot of people keep saying, Pokemon does have a lot of value. The fact that there's always games coming out, the fact that there's so many different ways to interact with the community, the fact that there's a, the anime, you know, like, I was there when the first Pokemon came out. Like, you know, I, I still have some of the originals, um, original cards. Sorry, not, not the originals. I, still, I have the shadowed ones. I remember, because otherwise I'd be like a millionaire. But yeah, it's just, you know, you don't know what's going to take off. But I would be very careful when everyone seems to be making money and you've got to be, you've got to be switched on to make sure that you're not going to be the last person to hold on to the, hold on to the uh, cable, I guess. I think from what I'm going to close this off as, Modern Horizons 2, let's wait until we see the spoilers. But Wizards of the Coast is going to have to make an announcement soon about what they're going to do about all this money that's going into reserve lists and not really straight to the Wizards of the Coast pocket. Anyways, guys, have fun. This is a bit of a rambling video, but I know that this is probably something more what my channel seems to like than the other videos I'm putting out. So let me know what you guys think and see you guys next time.